Right, Mr. Palmer here. Um, fourth time I'm trying this one, and this time I'm going to try and leave out the bad jokes. Okay, so CSS, uh, third video in the series on web technologies. The fourth one is going to be on JavaScript. Okay, so this one is basically can you describe three different ways CSS can be used, the four different ways it can actually be applied within a document. All right, so remember the historical perspective where HTML was created in order to identify content on a page, the different individual elements in order to provide structure. So it's describing what the information on the page actually is. With HTML3, they introduced things like the font and color tag, and that provided an absolute nightmare for web designers because now they're having to style um, like hundreds, thousands of individual elements across hundreds of web pages uh, on a site, on a single site. Okay, so obviously changing the look and feel of a site created uh, uh, you know uh, sheer hell for web designers so uh, the w3c were quick to bring out css cascading style sheets as a solution to this kind of a problem because it, css is used to define how content should be presented so there's three different ways you can use css um, with your html document first way is to use inline css where you actually use a style attribute with a particular element all right in order to style it so you can see this paragraph has a style being applied to it where it has a font of Arial or if that's not available Helvetica and then there is a color of hot pink yeah now you can see the problem with this is that individual the individual element is being styled so if you wanted to change paragraphs across an entire website you may be spending months and months and months changing it all Another way of doing it is to use internal CSS. Okay, so you put a style sheet in the head of a document. So on the right hand side in that big screenshot, you can see there's the head, and within it, between the style tag, I've just defined the same uh, style for uh, a paragraph. Okay, so this is a bit better because basically it's applying to all in elements of the same type within the page. So all paragraphs are going to have that style of um, uh, the, the same font family. Um, Aero Helvetica Sans Serif and uh, the color it's a gray some kind of gray color all right uh, there's a hex code there this time instead of a HTML color name all right by the way there are about 140 named colors in HTML if you search them up HTML color names you'll see them all right you can't just randomly make up a color name um, now uh, obviously that's useful because you're not styling individual elements on the page now the fourth way of uh, sorry the third way of um, using a CSS is you have an external file okay so you have the CSS defined in a separate um, document separate file and then your HTML page is linked to that okay so you can see the difference here between internal versus external with the internal um, on the left hand side every HTML page has a CSS style within the head and with external you have a single file external to all the HTML pages so the individual web page size is going to be a little smaller and if you're using browser caching it's going to be useful because once you've downloaded the first page and the link CSS when you click on the second page the browser your browser won't bother downloading the CSS again because it's already got it in the cache it will just download the HTML web page thus speeding up some um, time but there's another advantage as well to using um, external CSS because basically a single change in the external CSS document is going to impact all of the linked documents okay so now it becomes very very easy to update multi-page websites now when you want to style an element there's di there, there are different parts to the style okay the first bit is the element that you're styling is defined by the selector okay and you can have selectors in different uh, levels so you can have uh, you might have um, um, uh, bold inside a paragraph so you can do PD and then change the color of bold inside a paragraph for example all right now there is a declaration block that follows the selector that is made up of multiple declarations one or more uh, declarations okay so font family blah 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 is one declaration color is another declaration within that same declaration block okay curly braces indicate the beginning and end of declaration blocks and it's a uh, star and a slash slash and a star something like that for um comments okay now uh you can use classes and identifiers okay so the element uh if you want to style elements you just put the select with the selector you just write the element name as you saw with the p that's going to style all paragraphs you can style the headings h1 the same way img image the same way etc okay now you've got classes and identifiers okay 
uh, something's gone wrong with that animation there. But uh, so identifier, as you can see on the right hand side, is used to style a one off case. All right. So PID equals a special case. Classes on the left hand side, your selector starts with a dot. And that's used when there's multiple instances of the same style. You're going to, you're going to use it on, um, on multiple elements in different places on your website. OK, for example, you might have quotations. And so you will have a class for quotation and then apply that um, style on multiple pages and multiple instances where you have a quotation occurring in your, in your content. OK, so you can see with that, it's got P class equals and then the name of the class. And when you've got your identifiers, we've got your special one of cases is PID equals. Uh, remember the identifier you can see as well um, with JavaScript that will pop up again. OK, now. Um, another way of applying um, so that those are two different ways of applying um, CSS. You can see another way of applying it is when we have a pseudo class. All right. So pseudo class is basically define, spe define specific states um, that uh, an H that apply to an HTML element. Okay, so for example, A for hyperlinks. Hyperlinks can be unvisited, visited. You might hover over an hyperlink, or you might be clicking on it. Okay, and by applying those pseudo classes, you can define what happens during those um, uh, those um, states. Okay, when the user is doing something, interacting with that element. Okay, so it's very very limited interactivity. Though there are a couple of different states that you can apply. Um, obviously, um, you can with CSS you can change the x and y coordinates or the position of elements on a page. You can actually kick off and do um, animation um, that interacts when the user hovers over things, etc. Using CSS. All right. Now um, you want to might want to apply that, for example, to images. So, for example, image opacity might be 0 0.5, so it's slightly transparent. But when you hover over it, it becomes like um, non-transparent and totally visible. Okay. Now the problem with this is you might want to make an image gallery, so you apply this kind of pseudo classes to images, but then every single image on your website is going to behave like this, and you don't want that to happen. You only want it to happen to images in your image gallery. So you might want to create a class for images in your image gallery, and then apply these pseudo classes to it, and it's absolutely possible to do that. Image.gallery defines the image gallery class. Okay, so. Um, I could have just done dot gallery like I showed in the previous example, but in this case I only want the gallery class to apply to my images, nothing else. So I've done image dot gallery, okay. And then in the second declaration underneath it, you can see that the selector basically is image dot gallery, so that's the the gallery class above for images, and then the pseudo class for hover. So this is what's going to happen when I hover over it, okay. Uh, a point in note that the um, pseudo classes need to be applied in a particular order. If you change the order that you apply them in, then uh, they won't work. All right. Um, there you can see that at the bottom, I forgot I did that one. So image class equals gallery. So you can see that I'm using that, um, I'm applying that class now to that particular image because I want it to be a part of my gallery. OK, if you want to practice CSS, I suggest you download a CSS cheat sheet. Just Google it. Um, I think there was a really good one on Smashing Magazine, I can't remember. But if you just Google CSS3 cheat sheet PDF, and um, you'll find uh, plenty of examples out there. Okay, now, um, yeah, basically give it bash. So you should be able to describe three different ways CSS can be used, and four different ways it can be applied to um, different elements um, in your documents. Watch out for the next one on JavaScript later on this week at some point. Uh, here we go, stop this thing.